Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. We just recorded our ride um, line and we're going to do some processing on it today. Before we um, head off on that, quick service announcement. I'm going to start publishing uh, this project uh, and all of its files as we start recording audio. Everything that happens on a, an episode by episode basis, I'm going to start uploading all of that to my Patreon page. So if you want to follow this project literally step by step, everything that I do, you'll be able to mirror then I'll make all of this stuff available to my patrons. Also, uh, I've got rid of this show horizontal line business. It was an experiment. I didn't like it. I got rid of it. Okay, so we've got our ride line. And like I said, it's not perfect. It's not actually bad. I've recorded it pretty well. But there are a few timing errors or timing issues that we're just going to wipe out and learn a little bit about how to quantize notes. But in order to do that, we need to be able to zoom around the part and focus in on particular areas and zoom back out again. So let's uh, let's have a quick look at the zoom functions. If I press the control key on my keyboard, now wherever I scroll with my mouse wheel, I'm going to zoom into that precise moment. So if I just go in front of this D sharp two here and start moving up with my mouse wheel, you can see that it's really, really accurate. And I move my mouse as I'm scrolling and I'm constantly nailed onto that note. And now I'm scrolling backwards with my mouse wheel, move my mouse, choose a new zone, zoom in on that, zoom in on that. I just find this far and away the most organically convenient way. I've just got my control key held down the whole time I'm doing all of this. Another great um, tip for zooming is to zoom to um, locators. This is one of your keyboard shortcuts. And if we go to key commands and search for the word zoom, and then I start pressing the little plus magnifying symbol to repeat my search throughout the window. You can't just keep hitting enter. It doesn't work. It'll basically exit you out of the screen. Well, this is the fella here, zoom to locators, and you can see I've got it set to shift Z. Well, I've actually got a keyboard shortcut on my EK58. I use it absolutely all the time. It's one of the most common keys I hit. And what that basically does is if I select in the lower window and press zoom to locators, I'm now looking at bars one to nine. If I uh, select in the top project window, it does that one instead. So it is window sensitive. And sometimes you'll accidentally press zoom and you'll zoom the wrong, the wrong one of the two panes, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Once we've got zooming to locators under our fingers, it becomes very easy to change the locator range to just the first two bars. Select in my uh, event window below, press zoom to locators, and now I've zoomed exactly how I want. I also, this is a nice little tip, if you pick this locator bar up, see with the hand and the zoom symbol, Pick it up with the little hand way over on the left hand side, drag it over to bar number three, hit zoom again. You can jump forwards in two bar chunks. And I find this a really convenient way of navigating my way around. Pick it up on the right hand side, drag it back again, and back we come. Back we come. So this is how I navigate my way around parts in the event editor. So what we're going to do with these notes now is a function called quantization, which is this Q button here. And what it's basically going to do is move all of the notes to the nearest line. Now, when I say to the nearest line, that's currently how it's set up because this little plus and minus symbol here is set to use quantize. Uh, we have an option called adapt to zoom. If you choose that, you can see I've got lots, lots more lines now. If I press quantize, it's still going to quantize in 16th notes, which are these little lines in the locators at the top. So it's a quarter of a quarter note. Whereas we've got many more lines than that in the grid because we've asked it to adapt the, the grid lines to the zoom focus. So as I scroll in and out, you can see the number of zoom lines constantly changing. Whereas the quantize value is always 1 16th. I tend to sync those two things together more often than not. So I'll have my grid lines the same as my quantized lines and I know where the notes are going to move. So I'm going to click this note and you can see it's quite a long way off and I'm just going to press the Q button. And now that note jumps to the nearest line. Control Z to undo. 
but I want to quantize every note uh, on the D sharp two line. In other words, every ride note. Well, that's nice and simple. I have a magic button, which does exactly that. The magic button is, you want to search for the word octave. I can never remember what this feature is called. So I just look for the word octave, but this is it. Equal pitch, same octave. And I've got it set to shift Q. Uh, and again, I've got this on my EK58. So it's just, uh, what is it? Select all, same octave is the name of the thing. And so now every ride note is selected. Let's press Q again. In fact, I'm going to press the letter Q on the keyboard because that's the shortcut for it. And now all of those notes have just been quantized. I'm going to press dot to go back to the beginning of the song. And let's listen what that sounds like. Don't forget, we're only cycling around the first two bars at the moment. Turn the metronome off. Okay, great stuff. Now, when I recorded this, I noticed that I actually missed a beat right at the very end of the part. There's a ride um, note missing here. I'm going to draw that in. If I right click, I'm going to select my draw tool. Uh, I'm going to move my mouse to the point where I want to insert the note and simply click. Now that note has just been inserted. You can see it's really quiet. If I select all the notes on the same octave again, you can see that most of the ride notes are Let's see the different volumes, velocities. We've got 72 and an 87 and an 86. This note over here, the purple note, is much quieter. It's at 47. That's because my, that's my current default velocity input level. And we set that in this little box here. So if I choose my eraser, delete that note and choose a new velocity instead. Let's try um, 75. Go back to my draw tool, insert the note, and now that note's being inserted at velocity 75. Let's hear that. Okay, so that's the, the missing note fixed. Now the final thing that we're going to do today is take away some of that military precision. All, all of those notes are absolutely dead on the beat because they've been quantized accurately. But if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that the rest of the groove isn't on the beat lines accurately. In fact, if I just scroll forwards through the song, you can see that none of the notes are completely on the bar. Most of them are actually slightly behind, uh, but some of them are in front. It's being played by a human being, so it's all inaccurate. Look at these notes here. You know, they're very, very slightly out. Now, these, are, these amounts by which they're out aren't egregious to our ears, they don't hurt, they just make it feel more organic because that's what human beings do, we're not machines. If I select one of these notes, you can see we've got this funny value. I'll look at one that's um, ahead of the beat, it makes it a little bit easier to see. This number six here is the number of ticks away from absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect from a technical perspective is zero. And all of these notes are in the two, three, four, five, six ticks out range. Now there are 120 ticks in a 16th note. So this range that I'm currently selecting with my rectangle is a 16th note. This is a quarter note, which is one beat. And then four quarter notes go to make up a bar. So you've got 16 sixteenths in a bar and that's 120 ticks. And we set that level actually in our preferences and it's in the MIDI menu option. MIDI display resolution, one sixteenth note is 120 ticks. So you multiply four of those together and you've got 480 pulses per quarter note. That's what that stands for basically. It's a little bit overly fancy in my opinion. So we're going to fix all of these notes. We don't want them to all be on zero. We want them to be slightly wrong. Well, we can do that in the quantize page. Let's head into the edit section of the quantize panel. 
And can you see this rough setting down here? Just set that to six. And now you can see we've got a brand new quantized value. It's 1 16th with a randomize function of six ticks. Close that down. Don't forget we need to select all of our D-sharp twos again. And now let's reapply the quantize. And you can see that all of the notes are now slightly wrong. This note here is four ticks behind the beat because it was 120, don't forget. This one here is one tick ahead of the beat. And we've just made it just slightly more human feeling by making it not quite so perfect. Let's listen to that. It just feels nicer. It's intangible. You can't really identify um, values this small. You can't hear the difference between two ticks, but you can feel it and it feels better when it isn't military precise. Okay, that's enough for one session, I think. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit the like button. Uh, I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.